Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, or The Producer's Cut. Which one is the better film? Stay tuned and find out. Now, with all the recent talk about Halloween Ends being the absolute worst Halloween film with a filmography, uh, I decided to start watching all the old films again. And believe it or not, I don't think Halloween Ends is all that bad. Yes, it does have some inconsistencies, but it is not the worst film in the Halloween catalog. I suggest everybody go back to Resurrection. Trick or treat, motherfucker. Or The Curse of Michael Myers, which I'm going to talk about today. Now, believe it or not, back in 1995, I saw this movie on Friday with my date. And my date and I were really big Halloween fans. We loved the franchise and we loved 4 and 5, so we wanted to see what was going to happen here. And plus, the late Donald Pleasance had passed. And all the recent advertising to Hoopla was saying this is his last film. So we're making this in his honor and so forth. So we were expecting a great Halloween experience. (laughs) Yeah, needless to say, that's not what we got. As a matter of fact, when the film ended, everybody was so confused on what the hell had happened. We saw this editing barrage of Paul Rudd just beating over Michael. Then we there was a quick glimpse of him injecting Michael Myers with some green goo. And we're like, what the hell was that? Was that secret of the ooze? They never brought that up before. But yes, we saw Michael Myers, Michael Myers, Michael Myers beaten to death with a pipe. And then Donald Pleasant says, I have some unfinished plans to attend to. I have a little business to attend to here. When he goes... We don't know what happened. We, we just hear him yell off camera. Ah, yeah, yeah. And it cuts to black and it says in memory of Donald Pleasance. It was the most disrespectful and funny movie experience I've ever had. As a matter of fact, there was this guy directly behind me. My dad goes, what the fuck happened? And we all just started laughing in the theater because we just we had no idea. I was so disappointed that night. I had not seen the film until last week. But of course, as I'm older, I realize there's a producer's cut, which apparently is a better film. So I decided to watch the two and see which one's my favorite. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Now, the producer's cut is the result of all the executive interference that took place during the set of Halloween 6. And uh, there is like a 44 minute documentary that I've seen on YouTube. You've probably seen it yourself. If not, take a look at it. It's pretty amazing, but it goes into a lot of detail on how just there was no script they were shooting and just kind of building the train tracks as they were moving along there was they wanted to bring back daniel harris but she couldn't get on board because she was a minor and i'm glad she didn't because the disrespect they have for her character jamie it's pretty like how can you do that i mean you did that to rachel in part five now you're doing to to jamie the main character with this thorn trilogy you're just gonna do that to her and kill her off of the first 20 minutes i mean it was pretty bad A lot of us were upset, and you know it still stings watching today. Now, before I get into all the bad, let me go ahead and talk about some of the good that I enjoyed with this film. First, Paul Rudd. It's almost like schlock in a way. It's so bad, it's fun to watch. Paul Rudd has this inconsistent Boston accent, I believe, but he's from Haddonfield, Illinois. I was only eight years old when I saw him, but I was one of the lucky ones. He'll come home to kill again. Next time Michael Myers comes back into town, I'll be ready. It just it it doesn't work for me. So Paul Rudd is Paul Rudd nowadays, but I can kind of see the charm in his performance. It's just so awkward. Whenever it appears, he appears. This film does get a lot of points for me for it feeling like a Halloween. Now, no matter what film I'm watching, if you have the title or the name Halloween in it, I want to see, you know, autumn trees. I want to see some pumpkins. I want to see some Halloween decor. I love that. So that automatically gets a lot of points on my end. And I don't know if you caught this, but they actually casted Kim Darby to play Deborah Strode. She was the mom in Better Off Dead. Remember, they even had her look the same way. French fries. And French dressing. And I do love some of the original ideas they have with Halloween being banned for, I believe, six years because of what Michael had done in the past. That makes sense for the town of Haddonfield. There's that consistency with four and five. So I do like that point. But again, the film feels very 90s. You have Paul Rudd on a computer with Michael Myers on a monitor. I believe that's the first time ever we got to see Michael Myers mask on a on a computer. <laughs> again, some of the editing choices are very 90s and just don't work with me. Some of the zoom ins and just the distortion of the film and on the screen, it just really doesn't work. And some of the kills are really just feel out of place because they're incredibly gory for a Halloween film. Michael's a slasher. He just asks people where there's hardly any blood. But this particular kill, the first scene, the first kill actually... Michael breaks this guy's neck and you see his spine kind of protruding, which is kind of gory. And later on in the film, Michael holds up that just 
that caricature of a stepdad up against an electrical uh, box and his head explodes, which is just uncharacteristically not a Halloween film. I later found out those were just reshoots because of a screening uh, results from the test audience. But ultimately, the editing choices, the inconsistent story, and then the Thorn mythology not being seen all the way through, but ultimately, it's still a bad experience, in my opinion, for this film. And it even ends with so many questions left to the audience, like, what the hell happened? It was completely rushed, you can tell. So, in my opinion, the original theatrical cut is still pretty bad, and it's one of the bottom-tier films of the Halloween uh, filmography. Now, I know, again, there's a lot of passionate fans about this film. I don't see what's appealing about it. You have, If you love this film, that's that's wonderful, but please let me know what you love about it in the comments if you're a fan of this film. And that takes me to the producer's cut, so let's talk about that. First, let's start off with the good. Now, one thing I absolutely love about the producer's cut is that the score is much improved. The guitar licks are, are gone. <laughs> And it has the traditional Halloween score, which I love. <coughs> Two of the kills are brought down to Halloween levels. In other words, the gore, the exploding head, and the protruding spinal cord is, are removed from the film, which is perfect. And three, the Thorn mythology is sought through to the very end of the film. So even though it still is not perfect, no film is really. I hate critics who say that. Stop saying that, Rudy. But I love how... The Thorn mythology is consistent throughout the film, and even it's one item that is used to stop Michael Myers. Paul Rudd uses these rocks and marks the uh, Thorn symbol on the floor to freeze Michael in his place, which is pretty cool. So you don't have the ridiculously edited pipe beating <laughs> that you had in the, in the theatrical release. You had something that tied to the mythology, so that makes great sense overall. Now, the item that's much worse than the theatrical cut is how they handled Jamie. She's killed twice. Early on in the beginning, Michael stabs her, but it's off camera and she just kind of falls and Michael leaves her. But then later on, <laughs> you see her asleep in the hospital with a gun pointed to her. <laughs> this is worse. And then we find out that she was actually kidnapped at the end of part five and housed and chained up in some hospital that resembles a factory. And she was impregnated by her uncle. Oh, God, that's sick. And I'm still confused with that. If you can explain this to me, if you're watching this, explain this to me. If Michael's sole purpose was to kill his bloodline, then why impregnate his niece to have a child just to kill it? <laughs> I don't know. I also love how Kara Stone's child, who says in the theatrical cut that he's heard voices and he sees the man in black, we actually get to see that in the producer's cut. So it does make some sense in the film, but some of the editing Kill for him. is kind of funny because there's this one scene where I just started cracking up where the kid looks out the window and you hear a voiceover says, kill for him, Danny. But you see Michael at the same time and I got confused and I thought it was Michael was the one talking to him. So I had a good laugh with that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Michael talking? <laughs> the medical scene we had in the theatrical cut has now been removed, and now we have a ritual, a full blown ritual taking place, which makes sense within the mythology and an improvement to the story, for what it's worth. And what I love about the ending is it actually kind of makes sense. Now we know what Dr. Loomis was doing off screen while he was screaming, and just kind of rewind here. So Paul Rudd freezes Michael Myers with the ritual, uh, and then we have Dr. Wynn played by Mitchell Ryan coming in they switch places so when dr loomis comes into the scene he thinks that's michael on the floor he removes the mask and it's dr Wynn. and dr Wynn grabs loomis on the arm and loomis has that mark the thorn mark which i believe is saying to us that loomis is now the caretaker for michael and that's when he starts screaming then we get michael who's dressed as the man in black walking off into the darkness so even though it still doesn't make sense, and I think I understand that's what had happened, uh, it's better than just what we got in the theatrical cut, which was complete bullshit. So overall, my verdict on the theatrical cut is this. It does not stand the test of time. It's still just as bad as I remember seeing it in, back in 1995, and it is one of the bottom tier films of the filmography of Halloween. The producer's cut is much better. Again, it's not the best film, but it actually does make sense in my opinion. It's overall done well. There's a tone and consistency with the narrative of the film, especially with the mythology. So it's a whole lot better. So if you're going to see any of these two films, I highly recommend seeing the producer's cut. It's just so much better and it's worth your time. Now, again, I know the Halloween fan base is incredibly passionate like no other horror franchise. And if you disagree with me, please let me know. 
If you think part six, the theatrical cut is a masterpiece or just better than what I thought, I would like to hear from you in the comments below. So please like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new to my channel. I have some new videos here. Please check them out. This is what I consider my best work. And if you'd like to be a Patreon, please join my short but amazing list. I would appreciate any contributions you give to my channel. And as always, everybody, thank you for watching. I wish you and your family and everybody a happy Halloween. I will see you next time. Please take care. I got to come up with a better ending. Something cool. Everyone's got a cool ending. I got to come up with something. I'll think of something. You got any suggestions? Let me know. Take care.